How's it going everybody? You know who it is. My name is Sun Wu, and in today's video we are gonna take a look at the OP1's grid effect. First I'd like to point out that all of this is based on my observations, so it's completely speculative. If you have any better idea of how this effect works, feel free to share it down in the comments because we all like to learn. And with that being said, let's have a look at what I think this effect is doing. The quick explanation of the grid effect is that I think it's a ring modulator as well as a delay. And what that means, let's find it out by looking at the specific parameters. As always, we start with the simplest parameter, which in this case is the mix parameter that mixes between the unaffected signal when it's turned all the way down and the affected signal when we turn it up. And the next parameter is the feedback parameter. This parameter determines how much of our delayed signal is being fed back into the delay circuit and therefore how long our trail of delays is. In order to showcase this, I will also have to turn this parameter up a little bit. So this is the feedback at 50. Quite a short delay trail. And when we turn it up, the delay goes on for much longer. And if we turn it all the way up, we can even get this delay into self-oscillation, which none of the other delay effects in the OP1 can do. This means it just keeps going and going and going. And the next parameter is the beige parameter, aka the Y size, which is one of the two parameters in this effect that influence the delay length or the delay time, but they do so in a very different manner. So let's start with the Y size, turn the feedback up a little bit and let the delay go on like this. As you can hear, the delay gets longer, but the pitch doesn't change when I change the delay time, which is different from the other delay in the OP1 where as you change the delay time, the pitch gets either higher or lower, depending if you make the delay time shorter or longer. Let's crank the feedback up a little more to show another peculiar thing of this delay time. By that I mean that the Y size changes the delay time in such a manner that it doesn't compress or stretch the delay loop. Rather it cuts a little bit at the end of the delay loop off or extends that delay loop. And we can test this out by me first playing one sound that gets delayed and then in between the delay times I will play another sound and then I'll change the Y size in order to just cut one of these sounds off. And as you can hear, only the lower of the two pitches remains, whereas I cut off the higher pitched sound by shortening the delay loop. And if I make it longer again, the higher pitched note still isn't there because I cut that off by shortening the delay loop. So yeah, as you can see, rather than compressing or stretching the delayed loop, this cuts off a little bit or extends that loop. And this can lead to some interesting effects. For example, if we play a chord now. You can make it more percussive by first shortening the loop and then extending it. Great for some noisy stuff or more experimental music. And lastly, probably the most confusing but also interesting parameter of all of them, which is the X size right here. It has multiple functions, so let's go through them one by one. The first thing that I think the X size parameter does is apply a ring modulator to the signal before it hits the delay. 
And if we look at the oscilloscope of my original waveform, it looks like this. Just a very simple sine wave. You probably can't hear it right now because it's too low. Let's pitch it up. And now let's turn on the effect and you will only hear the affected signal. And you can see the waveform has these indents, which to me looks very much like ring modulation. And as I turn the X size up, we get less and less of these indents or more of them if we turn it this way. So that means the frequency of our ring modulator gets either slower when it's turned up or faster when it's turned down. I believe this is a ring modulator because if I turn this effect off here and turn my ring modulator within Ableton on, it looks very, very similar to what we just seen when this, when this effect is on. So that's why I believe this is a ring modulator that affects the signal before it hits the delay. And I think it doesn't hit the delayed signal again. So meaning the ring mod is not in the feedback path because otherwise the delayed signal would get ring modulated over and over again. And that sounds a little bit different to my ears, but I may be wrong about this. So first off, X size is a ring modulator. But secondly, the X size also affects our delay time, but it does so in a different manner to the beige parameter. Let's first of all turn the beige parameter up again, turn our feedback up a little bit. So I'm gonna play a chord again and then play with this parameter and therefore change the delay time. And you'll notice that unlike this parameter here, the blue parameter will change the pitch of the delay and therefore I think it does expand and compress the loop. In the beginning I always thought this parameter is some kind of bit crusher or sample rate reduction but after looking under the oscilloscope, I'm quite sure that this is a ring modulator. Nevertheless, ring modulators can sound like sample rate reduction. So you can use this to give your sound a little more of a old sampler feel while applying a delay or also without really having a delay if you turn this all the way down. There's not much of a delay going on. Also, this is just great for weird noise experimentation because as I said, this feedback here can go into self oscillation unlike most of the other effects. So you can just have some crazy stuff happening but always be careful with your ears because it can get loud. But yeah, of course, it can also be used in a more traditional way just to apply a delay that has a bit of a different flavor than the usual delay on the OP-1 and gives a little more grit to your sound when using it. So in order to do that, let's turn the mix down a little bit so we can hear some of our original signal. And you can hear it gives this nice sample rate reduction sound to your chords or ring modulator sound. Just too much fun cranking this feedback up and seeing what happens. 
Anyway, this is what I think the grid effect in the OP1 is doing. If you have any other idea, again, let me know down in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss the next one. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful time. Peace.